Here's the problem. If you were saving 10% of your income to end up with $100,000, you were probably living on, you were probably making somewhere in the neighborhood on average, right? Less when you were younger, more when you were older, living on maybe closer to $100,000 a year. Well, if you're making $100,000 and you're used to living on that, now you get to retirement and all that money's been saved up and built up, but the problem is now you're living on 30 to 40,000, plus you gotta pay taxes if that's coming out of 401k or an IRA. So you're living on even less than that. You just took like a 67% pay cut on how much money that you have. Knock, knock everybody. Got something fantastic for you today. My name's Derek Van Ness. I am an investor, wealth strategist, and life adventurer. Today we're gonna to talk about why the stock market is a terrible idea for retirement income. So many people don't understand this. They think the stock market is the holy grail and I'm telling you, if you believe that, you need to sit down and you need to listen to this. We're gonna break this down chapter and verse so that you get why this is not a good idea for most people, right? And when I say most people, I mean, if you're not a professional investor who spends all day analyzing this stuff, understands how the whole market works, all the um, macroeconomics behind the whole thing, how it works with the Federal Reserve and the total economy and what's going on with the pandemic and all the other stuff, then you need to listen, okay? Because we're gonna really break this thing down. I'm gonna keep it as simple as I possibly can for you, but there's a couple of key things that the stock market doesn't disclose very well that most people are unaware of. And if you don't know this, it's going to totally crush you. You're setting yourself up for terrible, terrible disappointment. And listen, I just wanna tell you, when I first started investing, I was very young. Um, my father owned a business and I worked for him. And at the end of the year, you know, he would give us a bonus to put into our, our SEP so that we could grow our money in the stock market. At the time, this was the 90s, it was mutual funds. And listen, that looked like the smartest thing ever, right? Because everything in the 90s was just going through the ceiling. And so I was taught, all you do is you just save money into the stock market every single year. Sure, the market goes up and it goes down and over time you're gonna average you know, 6% and you're gonna have a bazillion dollars by the time you die. Now, there's a bunch in there that seems like it makes sense and there's a ton of fallacies. So the first thing that we really need to address and probably the biggest problem with the stock market is volatility. So what's volatility? Volatility is the market goes up and it goes down and it goes up and it goes down. Right? And there are economic cycles that happen within that. If you've never seen it, you can probably check out Ray Dalio's video. He did it uh, about 2012, 2013, that talks about economic cycles. Highly recommend just Google Ray Dalio economic cycles. Watch that video. It's a game changer in the way that you th see things, especially because of where we're at in the market right now. We're kind of at the top and nobody knows exactly what's gonna happen, but the economic cycles will help you to understand and see the signs of what's going on, right? But the market does that, it goes up and it goes down and it goes up and it goes down. And the truth is right now, and I think nobody would argue with this, the stock market is not based on value. It is totally based on speculation. The president can tweet right now and we have changes in the stock market, right? He can tweet about China war or trade wars with China. He can tweet about a particular drug or whatever that's going on during the pandemic and the stock market reacts accordingly, right? And so a lot of that isn't that companies got better or worse overnight. What it is is people are anticipating, they're gambling that somewhere down the road, that's gonna turn into profits for somebody and they're trying to outguess the next guy, right? So, so that's part of the volatility of the whole thing is that right now, everything is based on guessing what's gonna be the future instead of what is the value of companies right now. Like the pro traders, they're, they're trading based on actual value but a ton of people are just trying to guess what the next big thing is. And just like gambling in Vegas, you might hit it big, but then you'll probably let it ride and put it back in and probably lose it anyway, right? The casinos in Vegas, all the buildings on Wall Street, those were not built on people like you or I winning. Those were built on the system taking money from you through what I'm about to talk to next, which is fees. The fees don't go up or down, the fees are systematic, right? Now, I don't know what you pay on your fees. Some people are as low as like, a half a percent. I've even heard of someone at a tenth of a percent uh, with their fees, but most fees are between a half and two percent, right, of what you have in the market every single year. So the guys on Wall Street systematically get paid. They get their one to two percent or whatever it is every single year, every single year. And listen, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that eventually those fees eat away because when they take the fees this year, you don't just lose the money that, they, that you paid out in fees 
you missed what that money could turn into over the next five, 10, 50 years, right? So over time, fees really have an impact and the difference between even 1% and 2% is dramatic over time, right? Or 2% to 4% is really major over time. So it makes a, a really big difference. The fees are systematic, but your earnings are not. And that's a real problem, right? So you lose money to fees every year, whether you win or lose financially. Because if the market goes down, your Wall Street guy, he still gets paid. Listen, that, that's not a testament against them, but honestly, I don't think the system is set up properly for to align advisors' interests with those of their clients. And that's just a personal opinion. I'm not an advisor. Um, I just see how it goes uh, in that world. So long story short, uh, the fees are, are systematically undermining things. And then the biggest thing is this, we see the stock market, it goes up and down and it grows over time. Well, part of that is just inflation, right? The reason property goes up in value over time, it's inflation. Properties go up or down, but over time they go up about 4%. Inflation's pretty close to that number. So realistically, a lot of the growth you see in the stock market, a lot of the growth that you see in houses is actually in inflation, just so you kind of know. And if you're getting 6% in the market, um, and let's say 3% of that's inflation and you pay one or 2% in fees, you're really not coming out that far ahead as far as the purchasing power of your money, right? So that's a whole nother big thing. But the danger of it is when you get to retirement, if you've been building and building and building, you see the, you see the uh, amount in your account going up in your 401k and your IRA and your stock portfolio, whatever, over time, um, what that turns into is it's very difficult because you're continuing to contribute to know how much of that is growth, how much of that is my contribution, how much of that is inflation, right? And so you're not really sure. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors there on what's actually happening with my money. Now, where this really comes, comes out and where you can really see it is when you get to the um, retirement side of the curve. So your whole life, you're building and building and building money. And this is where we get to the big ta-da, right? At age 65 or 70, whenever you retire, you plant a flag in the ground and you say, I'm ready to stop working. I'm gonna live off my retirement portfolio. If you're not aware of this, this will come as a huge shock for you. But when we run out, all the simulations are called Monte Carlo simulations over time of like the ups and the downs of the market. The question becomes, if I have a million dollars in my portfolio or however much you have, but let's use a million because it's a round number, how much of that can I take out each year as income and make sure that I'm gonna be able to get through my retirement with money. Here's the scary part. Depending on who you ask, the number's between three and 4% of the principal. Doesn't matter if it's an up year or down year, all that's factored in. You can take out three to 4% of your principal. So if you have a million dollars in there, you can take out 30 to $40,000 a year in income. Here's the problem. If you were saving 10% of your income to end up with $100,000, you are probably living on, you are probably making somewhere in the neighborhood on average, right? Less when you were younger, more when you're older, living on maybe closer to $100,000 a year. Well, if you're making $100,000 and you're used to living on that, now you get to retirement and all that money's been saved up and built up, but the problem is now you're living on 30 to 40,000, plus you gotta pay taxes if that's coming out of 401k or an IRA. So you're living on even less than that. You just took like a 67% pay cut on how much money that you have, right? Because the distribution side, the amount you can take out of the market when you get to retirement is so low and it's because of the fees and volatility, right? The problem is if the market does great this year, that's awesome. But next year, if it drops 30% due to the pandemic and you have to cash out in order to live on that money, you're selling that stock when it's low right? When you sell when it's low, now when it turns around and recovers, there's less stock in there to recover. So even if it recovers fully, you're less, less good off and you have less money to earn for you because you had to pull it out and sell while it was low, right? And this is the primary problem with the stock market as a financial vehicle for retirement is it's so inefficient. <clears throat> there are a lot of other places you can put money to safely earn income on a yearly basis that's much better, right? Even things like annuities in many cases will end up paying you better than the stock market account um, because in the stock market, the problem is you have to stick with your principal. You can't take your earning dollars out and spend those. 
because we need those next year and the following year. And with all the volatility, we don't know what those are gonna be. And if we don't know what the earnings going to be in the following years, we have to play it safe. And like I said, they've, they run the Monte Carlo simulations. You can look at all the numbers across the years. Three to 4 percent's it. If you get more aggressive than that, what happens is on those down years, you really get clobbered. Or if you only made one or two percent, there's plenty of years like that, but you pulled five or six percent out, next year you have less dollars to earn for you. And so it needs to do even better for you to continue to pull that five to six percent out. So over time, it becomes a real problem. Now there's one more thing here that most people don't consider, and that's once you get into your mid 70s and higher. Even if you can stick with the three to four percent rule, there's something called required minimum distributions, right? RMDs. And that's basically starting at age 72 now, you have to start taking money out of your retirement accounts. Otherwise the government will tax you really like a 50% like tax rate or something on the money that you don't take out. So you've got to take it out. Well, when you take it out, they require a certain percentage. In the beginning, it's lower. You know, it's in that two, three, four percent range, but eventually it gets into the five, six, seven percent range. So they're forcing you to pull money out of the stock market at an unsustainable rate. So they're forcing you to collapse that account because they want to get their tax dollars. They want you to pull more money out so they get their taxes before you die. Um, they'll get their taxes eventually anyway, but they want the money now, not later. So the big problem with all of this is between volatility, fees, and the government requiring you to take too much money out, you're going to live on way less than you were before retirement. You're going to um, have to figure out how to deal with the ups and downs of the markets that way mentally. And you're also going to end up having to pull more money out than the, than the accounts can sustain over time. There are much better ways than this. Um, and we'll, we can look at other, you can look at other videos and other things on this channel to talk about that. But I want you to get that if you're putting all your money into the stock market, it's not a one size fits all. It's a terrible retirement vehicle in my opinion, because it's so unstable, has fees, government requirements, and so many other things. And it's just inefficient because of all that volatility. So there are better things you can do with your money. If you have further questions, check out more of the, more of the uh, things on our, on our channel. I'm a bigger fan of using real estate effectively. I'm a big fan of using life insurance to create your own banking system and some of the other strategies that are out there. Um, depending on where you're at in life, those strategies will change from time to time. But I want you to be super clear. If all your money's going into a qualified plan or 401k, it's probably not gonna get you where you wanna go. Those plans can work. I don't like them. I work mostly with business owners and if you're a business owner, I think there's way better things you can do, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't, especially if you're a 401k and you're getting a match. Maybe that makes sense because there is extra contribution going in there. Anyway, I want you to think about this. Uh, if you want more solutions, you can always reach out to us, but subscribe to the channel down below. Give us a thumbs up if you thought this was valuable. And um, yeah, if you want to see the difference between averages and actual rates of return. Another thing that's related to this video, you can watch this other video up here and we'll go over that. So you'll kind of see how that whole thing works and what a difference it makes on how you're projected to do with your money and how your money will actually do. Anyway, my name is Derek Van S. Thanks for stopping by and we will see you on the next video.